Okay, so I've been contacted by Astonishing News and Reviews to build a large city diorama. And so this is actually going to lead into what has already been released, but the Epic City Diorama. These are the behind the scenes build sessions that led to the overall success of this build. So here I am um, starting out with the base. The base is going to be, be made from XPS foam. This can be bought at Lowe's or Home Depot. Home Depot specifically carries the pink stuff. I'm starting to cut the base so that it fits the form and, and the concept that I've designed. This base is going to consist of six 18 by 18 inch squares, so quadrants. And so right now I'm using a straight edge and a blade to cut through the foam very gently, let the knife do its work instead of ripping and pulling the foam so that it gets a nice cut and has a nice edge. So going over each pass, letting the blade do the work creates a nice edge. You see how easy it just snaps off there, how clean that cut is. Now I'm making the second cut. Again, these are 24 by 24 inch XPS sheets that you can get from Home Depot. These typically are on like a little side stack right down the insulation aisle. They're really easy to work with. They're small, so being 24 by 24, they fit in most vehicles. Uh, they're one inch thick. I prefer to work in half inch thick uh, foam, but this one inch foam makes a great base. You just gotta pay attention to that bow at the end of every sheet is how it's manufactured. So you wanna cut that out. Again, here cutting uh, shallow passes to get in a very nice cut. Make sure these bases are very clean. And there you have it, clean cut. So here's the half inch foam. This is what I prefer to use and what I'm gonna use for sidewalks. I've already got one cut and just getting an idea for how deep I wanna make it. These are gonna have three inch sidewalks initially and then I elect to make them actually bigger uh, later on in the build process. So right now I'm just measuring out how big I want it and we'll use the half inch foam on top of the base to create the sidewalk. So once again we'll start cutting our foam, half inch foam being a little easier to cut as it's not as thick. Now these first couple of pieces, I'm gonna start with the large parking lot which would be on the right side of the McDonald's. Um, you're gonna start with the parking lot as well as the uh, sidewall that lines the parking lot and so going to get the sidewalk pieces cut and then going to grab some 112 scale vehicles and start seeing how things fit, get an idea for the feel, the overall size of this piece, whether the 18 by 18 size of this parking lot is a good fit. It's really nice to have objects to use as reference, especially when you're working in scale. So being able to have 112 scale vehicles uh, to be able to look at this parking lot and make sure it makes sense really helps in the end to have an accurate scale for your builds. All right, so just making sure all these pieces are nice and square and all the same size using, continue to use the straight edge and a sharp blade. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And they are symmetrical. So now what I'm gonna do is start to sand down the sides and roll over the edges. So your sidewalks typically don't have a hard 90 degree angle. They're typically rolled over some more than others, depending on you know how they're made or where they're made or how long they've been there. So I want to recreate that effect. I'm using some 200 grit sandpaper and some elbow grease to start to sand down the edges and roll them over so they have a nice rolled uh, edge on that corner of the sidewalk. All right, so now I'm starting to create the expansion lines. This really sells the idea that this is a sidewalk. So I'm gonna do four inch expansion lines. So every four inches, there's an expansion line and do a half inch expansion line uh, coming from the edge of the sidewalk. Now I'm using a simple method of creating texture for a sidewalk, which is a tinfoil method. Everybody's got tin foil in their kitchen. Go grab you some, create a ball, and use that as a great texture for sidewalks or rocky surfaces. Now, once you have those expansion lines etched into your foam, you want to take something blunt like a pen or a pencil and really pronounce those lines so that when you get to paint and get to your washes, it builds up that realism uh, once you start to finish your pieces off. All right, these are all six of the quadrants. So now that you can see how big this is, this is laid out on my desk. This desk or this bench 
is three by eight. So you can see this thing is massive. And so this actually gets bigger uh, as I build it over the next couple of years and realize it needs a little bit more room. But initially this thing is three, six quadrants, 18 by 18 by 18. This thing is already massive. I've got all my sidewalks cut, as you can see here. That middle one is gonna be where the McDonald's and that three-story building goes. To the far left is going to be where the apartments are. And then the one on the right here is where it's gonna be our kind of rundown parking lot. So that is our base, but this is our main footprint of this build. Again, you can see how large it is. All right, so always plan for your builds. For this particular build, I did a 3D mock-up for astonishing news and reviews to show the overall size and components that would roughly be in this build. I also drew out a hand-drawn plan to keep myself uh, aware of where all the different pieces went. So now that I'm reviewing it, I'm very happy with the overall layout and it matches my design. All right, we're back at it here. Uh, where we left off, we had got our complete base kind of mocked up. We have all of our initial base pieces of foam cut, including our sidewalk, and it matches our overall drawn plan. So now we're setting up to start gluing everything down. The sidewalks have been textured. Do a one last look at the design to make sure we're good to go before you glue it down. But now it's the glue step. So we're gonna start gluing all these together, starting with the middle here. So I'm gonna use a combination of wood glue and hot glue. The wood glue is gonna be the perma bond but the hot glue is gonna help with the quick set so that I can keep these pieces from sliding while the wood glue dries. Using hot glue, I typically like to use, this is gonna be uh, you know, argued against, but I actually use the hot setting versus the cool setting on the foam. I actually get that foam to kind of melt together. Um, a lot of people choose to use the cooler side and you know, it's, it works in different scenarios depending on what you wanna do. But I typically use the hot side uh, for the foam and let it melt a little bit. So right now what I'm doing is hoping that to make sure I get a good adhesion is I'm taking some scrap foam and now pushing the wood glue around to make sure it gets a good coverage and that it has a good bond because you don't want this to come apart. So as the glue dries along with the hot glue, I use masking tape to hold pieces together to make sure that they stay perfectly aligned. This tape comes off very easily, but really holds these pieces together so you can get that nice tight bond between them as the glue dries. All right, so we got two quadrants down, the centerpiece and then our parking lot. And now I'm making sure they align and that the two pieces look good and square. So using the same method that we did for the centerpiece, using the wood glue for the sidewalks to get a good bond, and then gonna use the masking tape to hold them in place as the glue dries. All right. While this isn't the sexiest of all videos, these are the fundamental steps to getting a great diorama. Making sure your base matches your design, your base is cut and has the foam how you want it, textured and ready to go, and then getting everything aligned and glued down securely makes for a very good start to a large diorama. All right, what's up guys? So here we are, I think this is gonna be build session seven. Um, so bringing back the city diorama I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. I've only got a few hours into it, um, but been thinking about it a whole lot. So up next we have, before I start adding more to this, I'm starting to cut the holes for the manhole covers. Um, so I've got them all printed up and ready to go. Um, finally got the printers back up actually. Uh, after building the enclosure, <clears throat> I needed to do a few things to the um, the FDM printers that I put on the bottom and uh, just to get them some maintenance, some typical maintenance, especially for the Ender 3s, there's some maintenance that needs to be done. So I just cleaned up the nozzles, uh, re-threaded the PL, PLA through the Bowden tube, stuff like that. Anyway, back I'm printing again. So I got these printed, now I'm over here cutting the holes. And I thought about it as I was cutting, hey, I should share this. So I actually use a drill press with a um, hole saw and I cut them and they're, they're pretty much perfect. You take your time, do it slow, and you get a nice cut, nice perfect circle cut. Um, that'd be definitely hard to do with an X-Acto. So it just makes it more clean. So I've already done one, but I'm gonna do another. And before I do that, I need to get this last hole out. This plug out, and what's cool, these plugs, I keep them actually. And then um, 
I make columns out of them. So it's something else you could do with a rig like this. And this is only like 150 bucks that they have invested in it. And it's a nice tool that is very versatile, not just for diorama making, um, that you do a lot of cool stuff with. But <clears throat> these can be little, a bunch of them here, I do a lot of city dioramas. Here's some examples of some, <clears throat> but I can put these together and make a column later on. So save your scraps. Um, anyway, let's move on to what we want to show here. So I've already made an impression where I want to have this hole and um, I'm hoping I can get to it. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I can't get as far back as I'd want to get. So we're going to have to um, basically be right about here. Um, so I'm going to turn this on. Remember guys, safety first. So turn it on, make sure there's no obstructions. And uh, here we go. Like I said, you want to go slow and steady. That's it. Create some dust. Well, other than that, it's a pretty clean cut. Make some noise too. I just wear a mask, but I'm not. But anyway, you can see there's a hole. So that's how I make my manhole cover holes in pink foam. Blah 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 blah. It's gonna be the shortest build session ever, but I'm sure to somebody not they've not seen that done, so it's new. You're welcome. All right, I'm gonna turn the affinity equation down and get back to you guys. So I was just kidding about the earlier closeout. Uh, this is gonna be a continuance of build session seven and we're gonna work on how I do my streets. And I use cork to do my streets. I really love the texture. I know the plastic, let me get the plastic off, I'll show you guys. I really like the way it looks. I like the fact that you can pose figures on it and it doesn't press the foam. I like that it imitates, imitates or mimics concrete in a way with the pattern naturally. And I know it can be kind of soft, but once you put your clears on and paints and stuff, it actually toughens up and it becomes really strong. And uh, I like it a lot. This grain is actually a lot finer than what I normally work with. So this, this grain is going to be new. There's, there's grains of cork. Uh, I'd like to show you that real quick. Here's some like older remnant pieces. And you can see compared to this, uh, just the, the fineness of the cork itself. And, and they both work depending on the kind of look you're going for. Um, but I'm gonna go with the finer grain cork. Basically every city street that is the actual street and that sidewalk will get this. So, and I adhere it typically with wood glue, uh, but since these are very large, piece, large pieces, I'm actually gonna do the perimeter and hot glue. Um, it holds up pretty well. So we're gonna get our hot gun going, our hot glue gun going here. We'll start with our corner here. So this is the corner of the dio, the far front corner. Basically this becomes the parking lot on the side of the cafe. So we'll go ahead and start. I already know my dimensions of this is 18 by 18. So I'm gonna start out doing that. I'm just gonna cut an 18 by 18 piece. It's probably gonna be a little larger, which is fine. We'll cut it away and then cut out this piece for this piece uh, here that has on the corner of the sidewalk. So we'll go ahead and get our trusty cheese square here. I think this is 24 inches. Yep, go ahead and mark 18. Here's our height. Let's get our width. So we're down here measuring our cork. And now I'm gonna start it by nothing. So now I look at it. So uh, next up, we'll go ahead and make our cut. We'll do our long cut first. Always have a sharp blade on you. Just makes it so much more easier that first time you cut. And now we'll make our height cut. Add a little bit to it just so we mess this up. Have a little bit of working room. So now we have our 18 by 18 piece, well, a little bit over 18. And like a glove, like a glove. Perfect, got a little bit of left over here. Have enough to come in and measure it off. Yeah, I like it. T here, get a straight edge. Wow, 
lot of measurements, guys. A lot of measurements. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Here we go. Just gonna pull it over a little bit there. And it's kind of like fabric. You have some play, so you can pull it around in those places that may not match up as closely when you bring it down. Uh, but for the most part, there's our first piece. I'll cut the actual manhole cover that's right here. You can see the impression after I have it glued down, um, just so that it's perfect. So I think our hot glue is finally hot. A few extra, just gonna take a lot of hot glue. And what I typically do is I start with the area. So we're gonna take our hot glue. We're gonna hit our perimeter right here. So I'm gonna lay a, a bead of hot glue down the inside of this. Be kind of generous with it, it's okay. And with it being this hot, it has some play. So I'll take my ruler here and I'll push this down really get it in there and get it flat so that gets us our first layer now we go back and check everything good so now we're bringing our next bead here pull this as best as we can cover everything and while it cools we're pressing it flat with our stiff straight edge here you can see this guys there's not much play in this straight edge this is a great I believe this is a Johnson. So if you guys want to pick it up, it's very sturdy, solid. It acts as a ruler, a flat edge, you know, a straight edge. Very powerful, great tool. Great tool to have in your arsenal here. Making sure all my edges are still flush and good. So move on, come to this side and add a bead. Again, just taking that straight edge, pulling it. That way you don't get like a buildup of your hot glue up right under that edge. Now we'll just keep doing that same process uh, until we get to the end here. Let my hot glue heat up a little bit more. You really want it hot. But as you can see, it's laying down nice and flat and using that straight edge is, you know, acting as that, that guide helps lay it flat and it also stretches the cork out a little bit. So if you have, you know, some of those that don't meet all the way towards the end, this will help stretch it out. So by the end, like we'll have that, that piece just fully stretched. Let's go ahead here and apply some more hot glue. Okay, take our straight edge, push that glue. And when we get to the edge, we're gonna to wanna to apply it generous towards these edges. It has a tendency to curl, um, if it doesn't get pressed real good. And cracks are okay, cracks are wanted. You want it to look worn. So here we go. We'll come back and you know we'll trim off these edges that are overhang. And then anything that's curled up, like I was saying, it likes to curl. Come back with your hot glue, just apply that. And then just take your straight edge and just push it down. There you go. There's one street piece done for the cork. You know what you guys think? Cool idea, not an idea. I really like the fact that it's not just foam. There's something over it. Like I said, once you, if you mod podge it or clear it or do something like that to harden it up, this is this is great resemblance of asphalt. So what's up guys? Welcome back to, what is it, vlog eight now? Vlog, vlog eight, whatever. I'm out here working on that city diorama. This is the parking lot side of things. Um, so trying out a few different strategies with this. Um, I want to do something more than just a block. I want to you know, bring it out a little bit, give it you know, a depth feel. So I'm adding these little pillars in here. 
I'm just playing around with that. I uh, made them a little short, so we'll have to figure out how that, that works. But I threw in this uh, 112 scale 69 Corvette just to you know, give me an idea on size. These model kits run a little small, so as you can tell, this thing pretty much fills it up. My plan is to run these perpendicular to this wall, but obviously it doesn't make sense. You don't have room to turn in. Play with that a little bit. I don't think the clients can actually use real cars in here, but if he does, you know, he'll be able to get one or two. So this is the Corvette. Let me grab one. This is one of my favorite ones. Uh, I'm trying to throw this in here alongside with it uh, just to get an idea on feel. So it's kind of snug. Um, you know, I think we're shooting for three parking lot spaces. There's still one more piece. We may be able to bring it out a little bit because this is still going to be some parking lot. So this way, I think we're good. We definitely could fit three in here easy. It's just how does it look, you know, pulling in. So we'll have to uh, attempt to fix that. But um, I think the scale looks good. I think I would probably like it better to turn these. So it's like you're pulling in straight. And, you know, at this point, it's only two parking spaces. Um, but I was talking about the two car. So still looks cool, but I'd hope to have enough room in here for like a back dumpster. So there may be some add-on features he doesn't know about and maybe had to expand on just the size. And that's why I build this way, right? I get some of the pieces together and I start scaling and stuff like that. Cause I, you know, you can make plans all day, but until you actually get in and cutting it or you draw them some kind of CAD software and start throwing models in there, you really don't get an idea for size until you start doing this. So. We'll adjust, but I like this. I, you know, it fits within his scale or his size that he wants because he's gonna be displaying these for videos. So, but uh, it's cool. I like it. So I just wanted to throw that off a little bit. And you can have these guys like backing up in here or backing up on the curb. You know how these guys do. You know, you know what? They may still have room to do that, right? If it's too far and they only back this far in, right? As a parking space, that may work. I get two dumpsters in here. Do some displaying real quick just to give you an idea of what I was talking about here. So I was wanting to do like two dumpsters and maybe a little corral in here. Um, we'll be throwing some trash cans, you know, some pallets. You definitely don't want to park your 69 Corvette up in this nasty area. But if you do, you're, you're, you've been warned that uh, pretty nasty. So it comes out, but um, there's actually gonna be up here some chain link as well. And then there, there's gonna be a wall here. So you won't be able to visibly see it from this way. It'd be coming in. That's kind of my idea. And that's why I like having props around. So you can use these props for scale to make sure everything's gonna you know, be what you want it to be. So we're gonna start gluing our little pillars on here. Got the hot glue going, heating up. Uh, like I said, I'm working on these pillars. I'm gonna get these glued on, uh, and then I'm gonna go through and some more detail on this parking lot. So I'm gonna start with this corner. There's six, I'm gonna call quadrants to this diorama. They're 18 by 18. So I'm gonna work quadrant to quadrant. First phase is just getting all the pieces together before paint, modeling it that way looking at it as a whole. And then once I go to paint, I'll also work in that same process, each individual module. So basically I get everything mocked up, cut any kind of intricate detail before any kind of paint's done. It makes sure everything fits well and then move into paint. Like I said, this is where I'm starting. This is kind of the one I'm most excited about because it's an old busted up, you know, corner parking lot. Um, it's got some dumpsters. It's going to be the back wall coming out of a a cafe, so it's kind of like the alley side with the side door and, you know, maybe dimly lit trash everywhere, kind of where you see, you know, either you know, a bunch of rats or maybe some people coming to get scraps out of the dumpsters. So that's going to be cool. Uh, there's going to be some graffiti on it, uh, really just a grungy parking lot, alley parking lot. So I am uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm actually going to make sure this is the top on every one. I'm going to line it with these pre-RD lines so that all the blocks make sense. And then I'm just using hot glue here. It's quick, it's easy, it's durable. I'm using Gorilla Glue. Uh, they aren't sponsored, but I uh, highly recommend uh, you check out Gorilla Glue products. They're the good products. So, and then I'm going to do, I'm going to start out with the corners and then I'm going to gauge the middle ones just by eye. Nothing, nothing crazy, no super math done here. And you want to put enough on here. You don't want a bunch of squeeze out because that'll look bad. 
but um, you do want to knob. You want to make sure that uh, it aligns pretty well. Have a tool for that here. Got to make sure that it's nice and square. And then um, I'll do corner pieces. And I think I'm gonna have these facing outwards. I tried to, and it just didn't look right. As you guys can probably see there. I just don't like the way that looks. So I'm gonna go with one. And I think that does the job. So we'll do that one. And these are the ones I just eyeball, right? Just want them in the middle, nothing special, nothing fancy. Um, just visually. It makes sense. And there we are. So the next step is I'm gonna put a topper on here. So what I'll take is probably like half inch, cut it down, and then we'll do a topper like that. Be a little slimmer, but it'll, it'll look real cool. So probably jut it out just a tiny bit here. I like that. It's not too much, but it's enough. A lot of stuff I'll eyeball and cut especially when it comes with these custom pieces. So we'll cut that down and then trim this down to probably about half and then beat it up, make it look like concrete. Slow and steady. If you stop, you'll get these little burn marks. And I'll show you one. I'm not too worried about it, but I'll show you what it looks like. If you get a lot of those, it's definitely bad, but um, you can see that there probably. And then what we're gonna do is slim this down to about half. All right, and that's what we're left with. So if we bring it back over here to, we now have a topper and um, obviously I'm about to cut more pieces. She started getting an idea for, you know, kind of look we're going for, what it's going to look like. So, and that just brings out, it gives us some depth, gives us some character. Obviously this will go all the way around. These little gaps we filled in with some footers. Yeah, so I'm gonna cut down a few more pieces, but uh, other than that guys, this is gonna be the build for today. I, I get limited time with the kids' this nap schedule, so it's coming up on 2.30 my time, maybe closer to three, so I'm running out of time. And kind of wanna clean up, wrap up before they get up, so I'm not just like running from one thing to the next. So that will be it for this build session. I think this is build session eight. Hope you guys enjoy. Leave down below in the comments, guys, if you have something that you wanna see that I'm not doing, or you wanna see more of that I'm doing, let me know. Uh, this is for you guys, right? Hope you're digging it, enjoying it. Again, leave your feedback below in the comments. Thanks, guys.